Hey Mads at Cook, welcome back. So my last three videos have been a series of tutorials related to the circuit tracks. So I had a quick start guide, a full tutorial, a list of tips that aren't in the manual, and then this video is going to be about Novation Components, which is this software you use to edit pretty much everything on the device, as well as a lot of other Novation devices. So on the homepage you can see you've got a lot of their MIDI controllers, uh, the, all the circuits and a bunch of their standalone synths. So, obviously, we're going to go into circuit tracks, but you use this very same software for a lot of other devices. There is a desktop version, but the web editor, uh, as far as I know, has the exact same options. It's just that obviously you need an internet connection. So, you open up to this packs page, alongside you have the packs. I have my two packs that I use as well as three factory packs. If you have your circuit tracks plugged in, which you can see up here that I don't, but if you do, uh, this is where you can take a pack from your circuit and connect it to your account. And then, yeah, so you can create packs or upload them if you have them saved to your computer. Then along the top, you have your MIDI templates as well as the synth. And then just the updates and help. So let's start off with just what's in a pack. So you go into a pack, you can click on the icon or also this blank area up here. And you can see you have uh, all your samples. So I'm just using Gabe Miller's free sample pack. Uh, and then patches. Uh, clearly, I don't have very many patches, but if you're using a pack with more patches, you'll see a lot more here. Uh, and then the projects, which I don't have any of the projects saved on my like Novation account, but they're all just saved on here. So next up, in order to add samples, you simply just uh, click on one. Uh, you can upload a sample, or you can download that sample itself. But also, and and also you can rename it, etc. But Another way is if you just open up your file manager, you can select a whole bunch of them and drag them all onto a pad and it will auto-fill all the adjacent pads. In terms of patches, you can just select one um, and grab them from any of these options. Uh, or you can create a new patch from scratch within the synth, which I'll show you after. And uh, you can use that and save it directly into a pack. For projects, again, you can upload them or get them off the circuit or the cloud, um, but you're probably not going to be doing a ton of swapping projects around using the software because you'll just make the projects on the device itself. So MIDI templates are templates for what the macro knobs up here do when you're controlling a MIDI device. So that in order to get to that, you go into the MIDI tracks and you press preset because obviously there's no synth presets on a MIDI track, but the presets control what the what MIDI CCs it sends out. So you have a bunch of built-in ones um, that you can use, uh, but you can also create your own. You can just create one here, and you simply change the CC number for each one, and then you can send it off to your circuit tracks. Okay, so now let's go into the synth. If you go into one of your patches by expanding it, you can change the patch. Also, if you have your device connected, you can just select the patch in the preset menu and it will automatically bring that up on your computer. But say you want to create one from scratch. So now let's take a look around the synth editor. So at the top of any of the screens, you see your eight macro knobs. I wish that on this the, on the website it included the labels for them, because obviously on here they're labeled with specific functions and they don't actually limit what you can map them to, but you should try and follow them, and I wish it had those labels on the software. But anyway, um, so you have two oscillators, and each of them can be, there's a couple simple shapes, like sine, triangle, saw, and square, and then different pulse width options for the saw, and then just a pulse width for the square wave. Uh, you use the index to go through the different uh, well, in this case, the pulse widths, but there are also wavetables available. So say we do one of the digital nasty ones, you can scroll through the wavetable. Then is interpolation. So if you have this on zero, it will just cut through 
each frame in the wavetable, whereas if you have it all the way up, it smoothly transitions between them. And then you can tune it in semitones or also sense for a very fine tune. Density and detune are for unison. So you can change the amount of extra voices with density and the detune is how far apart they each are. So I like to do around 7 on the detune and then just however much unison I want on the density. The second oscillator is exactly the same uh, and then you can mix everything together. So you've got oscillator, oscillator 2 and then you just have noise which you don't get any parameters for this, it's just white noise. Uh, and then you have ring mod, which I'm not really going to get too much into that in this video, but it's just basically a cross modulation between the two oscillators. Um, depending on what sounds and what parameters you have for them, this can be very noticeable or barely noticeable at all. And then you control the pre and post effects. Over here in the filter, you can choose low pass, band pass, or high pass, and different uh, decibels per octave. Uh, which is basically, like you'll see, 12 decibels per octave versus 24, it's a, like a sharper or a steeper slope going down, like, and 6 decibels, you'll see it's quite, like, there's, it goes down quite slowly on each side, so there's quite a bit of leeway on both sides, whereas with 24 decibels, it's, it's a much sharper cutoff. Uh, and then you can choose which oscillators it bypasses. You can choose obviously the frequency and resonance, and you can also do that by dragging around this dot. Um, you can have key tracking, and there's also a built-in parameter here to map envelope 2 straight onto the frequency. And then there, it also has drive, so there are a bunch of different types to choose from, and you just choose the amount. Uh, so now let's go down to the modulation area. So envelopes, uh, like I mentioned, number two is automatically mapped to the frequency, although it's it's automatically mapped with an amount of zero, so you can make it, um, you can map it to something else and not have to worry about this default mapping. But rather than having to map it yourself, if you want that to be connected, just turn this wheel up. But yeah, so. The first two envelopes, so the first one is automatically mapped to the volume and you can't change that, but you can also map it to other things, so one controls both of them, or three parameters, or however many you want. These two envelopes have a velocity option, so you can control how much the velocity affects the intensity of the envelope. And then the third one has delay instead, and this one isn't automatically mapped to anything. Then you have two LFOs, you can choose the shape, so you've got Simple shapes, uh, random sample and hold is just random voltages. And then there are a bunch of built-in sequences. Uh, alternative is a sequence that only goes from zero to maximum. And then you have melodics, which are just different scales, sort of. Uh, anyway, you choose your shape here, you choose the rate. If you turn on sync, it will be synchronized to the tempo of the project, and you choose the relative rate. Um, you can add delay at the start, and you can also synchronize that, so it comes in, for example, an eighth note after you press a key. Um, you have slew, which you can't see any visual feedback of, but that's basically, uh, for example, if you had a square wave, uh, this is a very sharp, immediate high to low, but you can make it Slew that so it would be more like a RAM. And then you have the phase, which, yeah, just changes the start point basically. And you can have that as a one shot so it cycles through once and then stays at the last value. And common sync, which I think means that both of the LFOs are synced together. Uh, and then you can change the sync style, whether it's free it will keep going, or key sync means it will reset every time you press a key. And the delay trigger can be single or multi, which means does each note trigger the delay again. And then the second LFO, exactly the same. So now let's get into the effects. Um, you have a phaser or a chorus. You choose one, you can choose the rate, feedback, depth, delay before it starts having an effect, and then the level. If you want to have one of these macro knobs, uh, controlling this effect or the distortion, I recommend you map it to the level. Uh, then you have an EQ, um, you can change the precise frequency of where each 
one where each of these options are and then the gain for it. Distortion, uh, a bunch of different types. They're the exact same types, I think, as the drive over here. Uh, and you control the level and compression, I'm assuming that is. Again, you can map the level to one of these macronoms and then you control the voice. So you have portamento if you want, which is basically gliding between notes. Pre-glide means it will glide from either above or below even if it's not coming from a previous note. So the first note will still have a glide and if it's positive, it will glide from above. Negative, it will glide from below. And the keyboard octave means that um, by default, it will be lower or higher. The only real thing I use this for is so that when I'm previewing presets in the preset menu, I can hear it, oh that's low so it must be a bass, or that's high so it must be for, must be a lead or etc. Before we go into modulation, let's just see how these macros work. So you have a little dot here, and you can drag this onto any parameter. Uh, you can have more, like each dot, as you see when you use up one, there's another one, and that can be up to four. But yeah, you can just put stuff wherever you want across here. Um, and you can also use this to change the depth uh, by just clicking on the dot and dragging. In the modulation area, you get more precise control over this, so you can change this. You can change the destination for each of the four dots, basically. You can change the depth of how, how much effect it has, and then you can also change just the uh, amount, like how much range it has, basically. And then down in the modulation matrix, you can map different uh, inputs or sources. So the velocity or the keyboard is like the note you're playing, or one of the LFOs or envelopes, uh, and direct just means nothing. Um, you can map any of these sources with a certain depth, which is how much effect it has to any of these destinations. Uh, you can also map one of these macro knobs onto a modulation matrix, which means the knob controls the intensity of it. So for example, you could have an LFO mapped to the pitch, and then one of the knobs controls how much it affects it. So yeah, we've got oscillators, mixer, filter, some modulation, effects, chorus, equalizer, distortion, and the voice controls. You've got modulation and you can drag and drop the macros onto different parameters and then we have the more fine control of that of those macros as well as the modulation matrix so i think that's it for what you need to know about the motion components in order to get the most customization and use out of your circuit tracks if you found this helpful make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more content just like this and if you have any comments feedback or suggestions make sure to leave them in the comment section down below and other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.